in Jamaica, we have not been able to achieve a sustained reduction in violent crime, despite having one of, if not the highest rate of murders in the world. And that is because the causes of crime are not being addressed. And the causes of crime are the steady flow of young men in particular, not exclusively, who come through the system of parenting into early childhood development, into primary, into secondary school, and do not achieve anything that directs their life towards constructive citizenship and an ability to make a decent life for themselves. Many of them uh, do not have the required subjects or no subjects, and the allurement of a life of crime is irresistible, and they take up the gun and they get involved in antisocial behavior, and of course, gang conflict, and ultimately that is a big contributor to the murder rate we have. So the PNP's primary approach to that is to deal with the cause of crime through family life, strengthening family life, and I spoke to that in a number of respects. Building out a world-class early child development and primary school education system so that by the time our children are ready for secondary school, they are able to read and write. They are numerate, they can, they can do basic arithmetic, and they can understand and think critically. If we give our children that start, which many of them are not currently getting, the outcomes of our secondary school system will be completely different and will be much more positive. We will not have literally thousands of young people every year leaving school who are semi-literate or and have no subjects. And that is what we, that we need to avoid that pipeline of young people going into a life of despair and negative behavior. And I also spoke to the need for a holistic national program for transforming the fortunes of youth at risk, which I think is a fundamental part of the solution. Not a piecemeal approach with a little program here and a little program here, the private sector getting involved over there, some NGOs over here. No, we need a national program. And Gabby spoke to the National Youth Service being revamped, and I, I would say that that needs to be a program of mentorship, of remedial education for those who need it, and training, vocational training and skills training, and job placements, readiness for the life skills training, and readiness for work, so that we can reorient those young people towards being productive citizens who the rest of the society does not have to live in fear of, but rather can embrace because they're helping to build our nation. And that was the element, those are the key elements of what I was putting forward. I don't think the essence of a crime plan in Jamaica is arming the police with more assault rifles, um, taking away the rights of the people. You know, it, uh, yes, we do need to expand the numbers in the police force, and we've been saying that for some time, because they don't even have their full complement now, so that the number of police officers per capita in Jamaica is, is lower than the rest of the region, despite us having this terrible problem of violent crime. And that's because of a failed strategy of this government, where they have spend too much of the resources, the available resources from the fiscal space that was created uh, arising out of the success of the IMF program. They've allocated too much of that fiscal space to capital expenditure for the military, which has been increased both in terms of uh, things like boats and ships, but also the numbers in the military have been expanded. The police have not been expanded. Yes, some police stations have been re re um, renovated and we support that fully, but there are not sufficient police officers on, on the road. And of course, the legal system is an critical part, the justice system is a critical part of managing violent crime because that's where you ensure accountability, where persons who are charged, having been investigated and found to have a case to answer, are effectively prosecuted. And we have a problem in the court system, as you know, with endemic delays, underfunding, and, and so on. And there have been a, a, a big attempt to improve that, and I commend the Chief Justice for the work he has been doing, and both Minister Chuck and myself as his predecessor put in a lot of effort to eliminate some of the in inefficiencies in the justice system to deal with the backlog of cases. But that needs to continue. 
and the treatment of people who come into conflict with the law but are not hardened criminals through procedures and part, uh, uh, that deal with justice procedures that are not strictly prosecutions but rather seek to deal with restoring re heal, healing relationships, restoring relationships that have been fractured through restorative justice, mediation, and in, in the case of children, the child diversion program. These are important policies for which there is continuity across administrations and those need to be again intensified and given the resources so that they can also have an impact in keeping uh, our justice system from being overwhelmed with gun offenses and murders. So that's essentially how we see the issue of tackling crime in Jamaica. It cannot be done just from the point of view of states of emergency zones and the like. As we have seen, you're not getting any sustainable positive results. Murders are up 8% this year over last year.